Hello, hello, my fellow art nerds, and welcome to this Medibang Paint Pro tutorial. Now, we've already done the hard basics, but today we're going to learn how to do some glows and transparencies on these two little Victorian ghost children here. If you want to see how I design these kids, you can check out our speed paint video where I talk about my design process and how I drew them. Not quite step by step, but you get to see me draw through um, their designs and come up with, you know, their many backstories. But today what we're going to do is we are going to focus on how we would, you know, fit these ghost children into the scene that you see behind you. Now it didn't take me long, so I didn't bother to record it, but what we're going to do is figure out how to make them almost seem as though they are within the scene rather than just being copy pasted on top of it because right now they don't really fit into it. So let's work with this. So I have already kind of set the scene with them in another kind of folder over here but let's talk about how I did that. So to start off with all of this I had to merge all of these layers together just so then they have individual layers for each one. So my little ghost boy over here, he has his own full layer. And then my ghost girl over here, she also has her own layer. All I've really done is just reposition them a little bit. I've drawn in this little tombstone behind them as well because I want to work with glows there. But what we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to create, you know, make them feel more like they're within the atmosphere. Now normally what I would do if it was just a normal person is I would put on a bunch of multiply layers and I would make them feel like, you know, they're dark as well within the scenery, but they're ghosts, right? I, fig I figured that they should probably be glowing. So let's go with a bit of a glow tutorial. So let's start with our boy up in the front here, our little forest boy. And what I'm going to show you is a couple of things. First to change his color, just so that it, he fits within his own glow. And then we're going to show, I'm going to show you how to make that glow happen. So I'm gonna create a new layer over here. I'm kind of irresponsible. I haven't renamed really any of my layers right now. So let me just name this one. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna name this one screen. We're gonna make a screen layer mode. And if we hit this little thing here, it says clipping. That'll create a clipping mask. So it just goes directly onto our little ghost boy here. Let's take my paint bucket tool change the reference up top. So up top over here, you can see you can change the reference to either your canvas or your layer. I'm going to go to reference the layer, not the canvas, and I'm going to hold alt down and color pick on his little tail on the bottom there because I want the green of all of that. And all I'm going to do, because this layer is already clipped to the little ghost boy, I'm just going to click once. And you notice how it only stays within him because I have created a clipping mask. So what I'm gonna do next is up here on the right, you'll see there's something that says blending and those are all of our layer modes. Now you can change, you can't really see in my drop down menu, but there's a bunch of different words under there and that'll tell you which type of layer you are creating. So what I want to find is something that's called screen. I'm gonna click that. And what that does is it kind of creates this, almost like a light. It makes it look almost like there's a light that goes directly on top of it, so I'm going to do that for him. I'm going to turn down the opacity of this layer to adjust it to my will. So I think I want it there. So once I have adjusted my opacity and ever and clipped it and made sure that it all looks perfectly fine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another folder within my folders. I'm going to name this one boy, just so that I know it's the boy. And again, I'm going to select both of these layers. I'm going to hold down control, select them both, click and drag them into the folder and close the folder again once more. I'm going to hit control C, control V, and that creates a merged layer. Now we want this to, we want to keep our old layers as well, just in case if something happens. Now it's all basically just for safety. It just in case if we mess up somewhere, we all, we still have the original. And I'm going to name this one boy merge just so we know. And now I'm going to do the same thing with our girl over here. So I'm going to take, I'm going to go a little bit faster now. So I found her layer, create a new layer, going to name this one screen, add a clipping mask, alt and click onto her tail there, her little ghost tail, click once so that it fits inside, change the blending mode of the layer to screen, and turn down the opacity as much as I see fit. I think I'll have it at 38% there. Then create a new folder, select 
select both the layers, put them in there, rename the folder. So now we have both the girl and the boy merged, and we've put little screen layers on top of them so it looks they're a little bit more glowy, so they look a little bit more a little bit more ethereal. I think that's the word I could use. And just for the sake of it, I'm also gonna show you how to use a multiply layer for this tombstone here, just to make it a little bit darker. So it's the same kind of deal, you can make a new layer, turn it into clipping, but I think this one will be short for multiply. And this time I'm gonna pick a dark color that's in the background, so I kind of went with this magenta-ish thing. Once again, tap once to change that, and I'm gonna change this layer mode to multiply. Now multiply kind of does the opposite of a screen, so multiply kind of darkens. layer. I'm going to hold shift. Actually, let's make the folder first. And then I'm going to hold control or shift. I can drag them into the folder. Name this tombstone. Control C, control V. And now I have the tombstone merged. So now we have the tombstone. We have the girl. We have the boy. And they all have their respective layers on top of them. Now the thing is, though, is that they're ghosts, right? We don't really, I don't really think that they should be completely opaque. And that's the reason why we wanted the layers to be merged. So let's go over to the boy's layer. Now his is nice and easy. It's nice and easy to just change the transparency because all you really need to do is go up to the top here, just says opacity, and just turn it down a little bit. Just gonna wanna turn it down a little bit. Same with the girl. I wanna turn down the opacity. So you can kind of see what's going on behind them. You don't want to turn it down too harshly because you won't really be able to see any, you won't be able to see them very well. But turn it down just enough until you see fit. So I think that works kind of well. Just turning down their transparency is a nice and easy way to do it. Um, but I think I want to go into a little bit of a fancier way to turn down the opacity and kind of mess around with that. So let's do a bit of a fancier way. Now, for me personally, what I kind of want to do is make it so that only their tails are kind of, you know. So what I have selected right now, all the way at the bottom here, you'll see there's something that's called Eraser Soft. Now these are all default brushes, so don't worry, I'm not using anything that you need to download. But you also want to make sure that you are still on your brush up here. You don't want to use the eraser, you want to use your brush tool, but this is the Eraser Soft. So I've turned it up so the brush is quite big, but I've also turned down the opacity, and that's what you want. You want to turn it down quite a bit, and all you really have to do is just slowly work with this. You don't want to go too crazy with it. And you want to kind of stay fairly zoomed out for the majority. Because if you zoom in too much, you kind of lose your way a little bit. So I'm just kind of erasing certain sections. Just kind of around him, not the complete thing. I'm gonna do the same for her over here. So let's switch from the boy's layer to the girl's layer. And of course do this however well, or however much you see fit. Maybe you don't want to make anybody transparent, and you know what? Alright, so I've kind of got a fancy way to do transparencies on ghost children, but that's still not quite enough. We still do want a glow on all of them, and I'll show you how to add it so that it looks like everywhere is glowing and not just them. So you want to make sure that you add a little bit of a glow onto the objects around them as well, not just the characters, because then, you know, it still kind of looks like they're still just kind of tacked on there. And you want to make sure it looks like, you know, they're actually within, you know, within the scenery that's there. Right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna do the boy first, as always, just because he's, you know, in the forefront there. What you're really gonna have to just do is you're going to want to take a brush over here that's called an airbrush, near airbrush. If I just work on the side, you're also gonna want to create a new layer. So now this layer above boy merge, I'm gonna change to the glow. I actually have it below the boy merge. Gonna want a layer called glow. If I 
color pick from his little tail there again. If I do this off to the side, you'll notice that this brush is very, very, very soft. Right? It's a very soft brush. So you're going to be working with that. Now I'm going to change a couple settings with it. I'm going to turn off size by pressure. And what you can do, how you do that, is you click the little gear here, and there's a little checkbox that says size by pressure. You can turn it on, turn it off. So I'm going to have it off. But I will keep on opacity by pressure. And all I'm really going to do is just start kind of working around the character. So this is what I'm starting with, just immediately outside the character. Just give him a little bit of softness that way. Just gradually work in the airbrush. Just so then it gives him a little bit of a nice soft glow just immediately around him. I'm going to do the same thing with my girl. Because we have opacity by pressure turned on, what that basically means is now it's taking information from your hand and how hard you press. Now depending on how hard you press is how opaque your brush is going to be. So this whole time I'm pressing very, very lightly. I don't want anything to be too harsh. I have the opacity of the brush itself turned way down low to 8% here anyway. But just be safe, I also am pressing very, very lightly with my hands. And with that, we also have our glow complete around children themselves. Now you can also turn down the opacity of this glow if you'd like, um, just to adjust it a little bit. I think I'm actually going to adjust just a smidge. You can even change the layer type if you like. I think I'm just going to leave it at normal. You can adjust the glow as much as you want, with the opacity, with the layer type. So once you kind of have your glows, you're satisfied with them, they're looking pretty good so far, but I don't think that they look quite right just yet because, you know, they're not really affecting anything in their surroundings. And I think that they should be because, you know, they're ghosts and they're glowing. So in a dark forest like this, I feel like it would be strange if nothing was also reflecting that color. So again, I'm going to start off with the boy because I think he will be affecting the tombs, the tombstone the most. So let's start with adding a glow, a bit of a glow to that tombstone. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this Tomb Glow. <laughs> Sounds like a band name. Um, so I'm going to call that Tomb Glow and let's create a clipping mask. And just add a little bit of a glow onto the tombstone there. And that glow's a little bit too intense. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the blending mode to screen. No, not light, to screen and turn down that opacity again once more. And I'm also gonna work in the eraser as well, just so then I can adjust how intense this glow is. So I'm working back and forth between the eraser and the airbrush. And what I'm also going to do for this little boy's glow is I'm gonna create a layer that is not clipped to the tombstone. I'm gonna call this one Glow Ground. So now there's a glow on the ground there. I'm going to yep, have this underneath, above the boy folder, but below the glow for the boy and the boy itself. And I'm gonna work in same color, same everything, but I'm gonna work in a little bit of a glow on the ground there, with the brush. And also work around with the, oh, what the, oh. <laughs> Also work around with the eraser to kind of adjust the size and the shape of the glow. So it's really just you working back and forth with the brushes and the eraser and the, and the opacities. And of course, you can always change the opacity there. I'm gonna change this layer about to screen as well. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with the girl. I'm going to use the same Tomb Glow layer, color pick from her tail, and because she's behind the tombstone, I think she would only really affect the edge of it here. Right, so just kind of have her affecting just the edge of the tombstone there. Just like that, to give them little glows, because their whole bodies are glowing, not just you know, the single section, so they're not really casting any shadows. 
They're kind of transparent, so I don't think they would be casting shadows anyway. Let's add a little bit of a glow to this candle here as well. So I'm going to go back to this glow layer this time because it's a candle. I'm going to go with a little bit of a warmer color, so I'm going to go with this orange here. Go with the airbrush. And with that, that is pretty much just all I would do. So now we have some nice glows around our kids here and we have them kind of fitting into the scene a lot better than what they looked like initially. And I had a lot of fun designing them. I had a lot of fun drawing them. I really like drawing ghost children or just, you know, younger kids in general. It just feels like more fun. But I also really have a big love for the Victorian aesthetic. If you liked what you saw, make sure to leave a like on this video, comment down below to tell me what you'd like to see me draw next, and hit subscribe so that you never miss an upload. And hey, we art nerds gotta stick together, so join our little art community with the links down below. With that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye